Okay, doing the second part of 12.3 of the binomial distribution, we're going to look at one more example using the formula and use the calculator function. So a quick review for the formula. We have the first part which takes care of all the successes and failures and how many ways they can be arranged. We have the count for how many prob uh, successes we have, and that's going to be the probability of success and just what it is and puts it in for all the situations, all the arrangements we have. Same thing for the failure or the probability of a failure. Now this example, there is a chance, there is a 15% chance that a person will slip while taking a shower. Of the 30 people that live on your block that do shower, what is the chance at least three slip? Again, that 15% is a parameter, it's not gonna change, okay? We're thinking of all the people that shower, so pulling one out is not gonna change that 15%. So the probability is going to stay the same. We have our set number of trials, which is 30. And now our R, at least three. So that means at least three, it means we're going to start at three, four, five, six, all the way up to 30. Our P is 0.15, 15%. And our Q is 85%. Now, doing this and thinking about it, when we did that example for the dollar dog day and it said at least six, we had to do six, seven, and eight. There are three formulas we had to do and then add those together. Here, we would have to take the time to do four, sorry, three all the way up to 30. So let's think of another way to do that. And first, let me, let's think of all the possible people that could slip or ways people could slip. We can have zero, one, two, three, four, 29, 30. I mean, there, that's a long, so it's every single possible outcome. Zero people could slip, one person could slip, or all 30 people could slip. Now, I'm asking for three to 30. So if I wanted to just block that off, That'd be all those numbers there. And that's all the formula we would have to do. Okay? You would have to do that formula that many times, then add them all up. Could you do it? Yes. Will you have time to finish my test? Probably not. Another thing you do is use the complement. Okay? Instead of saying at least 30, let's find less than 30. Sorry, no more than three, or at least three. Let's look for less than three in this case, okay? Less than three would be zero, one, and two, okay? Adding up all these probabilities together will give you 100%. That's all the ways it could happen, okay? So there has to be 100% there. If we're looking for that, the complement would be zero, one, and two. So if we do the formula for zero, one, and two, and add those together, that's going to be the opposite and our complement, and we can use that property to find our probability from three all the way up to 30. So if I do these this formula here, 30, NCR zero, 0.150, 0 0.85, 30. 30, NCR one, 0.15 to the first power, 0.85 to the 29th. 30, NCR two, 0.15, to the second, 0.85 to the 28th. And if we get those probabilities, fairly small, 0 0.763, 4.040, 10 10.337. If we add all those up, there is a 15.14% chance that zero, one, or two people slip. That's the opposite of at least 30. So if I take that and subtract it from 100, that 15.14, that represents these three values here, 15.14%. So what does that represent? And you should get 84.86, 84.86, And that 84.86, that's the probability of at least three, okay? We use the property of complement. We found the opposite, what values we weren't looking for, and subtracted it from 100%.
Okay, so that's kind of just a shortcut. Yes, you could have done three to 30, it would have took a long time, okay? Working smart, not hard. Zero, one, and two, and subtracting it from 100 found us that same probability. Okay. Now we're gonna look at the calculator function. Okay. So binomial function on the calculator. What we're gonna be looking for is the binomial PDF. Okay, there, that's the one we're gonna focus on. So binomial PDF, and that should be if you hit second distribution or second DIST, I believe it's DISTR on some calculators. So second distribution, you're going to have to scroll down a little bit. Okay, so it does go down and it's binomial PDF. Be careful, there's a CDF and a PDF. If you take probability statistics or AP statistics, we'll talk more about what the PDF and CDF represent. Right now, I just want you to make sure you are using the PDF because we're going to be looking at one value at a time. And the values you need to plug in are your total, which would have been your N, your percent of the success, which is your P, and the value in question. How many is it going to show up? That would be your R. So the example we have here, the chance of getting a $5,000 bonus is 14%. If there are 40 workers, what is the chance exactly 12 get the bonus? So going through here, we have N is 40, total number of workers, R is 12, and our P is 14%. Now depending on what calculator you have, okay, some of the older ones you have to plug it in, kind of like how I had it up here, binomial PDF, 40 comma 0.14 comma 12, and then that gives us the 0 .0046, which you would then turn into a percentage. If you have some of the newer calculators, they ask for trials, P, and then X value. N, P, and that 12, that X value is your R. And you would go down the paste, and then it would end up looking the same once you paste it. Okay? It just has a different way of plugging in your values here. Okay, if you have the older ones, make sure you put those commas in between uh, to separate them. But you can see your answer, 0 0.00464. Move the decimal point over two spots, 0.464% would be your answer in this case. Okay, so again, newer, older calculators, try and pay attention to what version you have and what values they're looking for. Okay, now this was exactly 12. The chance you get a $5 bonus is 14%. If there are 30 workers, what is the chance they give out anywhere between four to eight bonuses? Well, now we're doing one of those ranges. Our R in this case, four, five, six, seven, four, eight. Okay? So, some ways you do this quickly. You could plug in each one in, write down all the answers, and add them up. Okay? Another way you could do it is if you have brackets, okay? If you hit second parenthesis and plug in as brackets, four comma five comma six, seven and eight, and what that does, it lists all your probabilities at one time, okay? So you're still plugging everything else in the same. Binomial PDF, 30 comma 0.14, there's your N, there's your P, but instead of just plugging one number in, you're then doing, don't forget your comma there, bracket, four comma five, six, seven, eight, and list all of them, and that might just save you some time adding those up. Now, one more shortcut you could use is the sum function, okay? If you go to second list math, I believe it is the fifth one down, and that's a sum function. If you do that sum function first, it will add all these up for you. So before you do binomial PDF, first go to the sum, and it would look like this, sum, you have your parentheses, binomial PDF, and then everything else gets plugged in just like we did in the top one. And you can see the difference. Here it gives you a list of answers. It add, This sum adds all of them up to give you one single answer. Your final answer, 0.6030 7855, just turn that into a percentage, 
60.308%, it does all that work for you. Okay, so again, look where the sum is. The sum is the first thing you put in. Then you do the binomial PDF. Binomial PDF, your N, your P, brackets. It's not a parenthesis, it's a bracket. And then you plug in all the numbers. Okay? So that's just another shortcut that you could use if you're, if you're using the calculator function to do these. Okay? So and if you have the newer version, just like where it says the X values, you're just still putting in the brackets and it's on a paste all of them in there. So that should work out the same exact way. Okay? So there's one more example using the formula and now you know how to use the calculator function. So that's the end of 12.3 of the binomial distribution.